Hey everyone, I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know what? This is my my uh, best movies of 2016. Yeah, this is an overall, the top 10 movies of 2016 in my opinion. So, I mean, I didn't really, there's no point system, there was, I just kind of like went through all the movies that I saw over 2016. Looked at them, saw, looked at them, kind of figured out which ones I liked the best, which ones I didn't care for. Um, there's going to be quite a few of these. I'm going to film them mostly today, so you might see me wearing the same shirt. Um, so, the best, the top ten best movies of 2016 are Money Monster, at coming in at number ten. I can't believe I'm throwing this on the list because I can't stand George Clooney. Or Julia Roberts for that matter. But this movie was good. No matter who was in it, who was playing the part, George Clooney did a good job. Julia Roberts did a good job. I really enjoyed Money Monster. If you don't know what it is, basically George Clooney plays a on-air financial whiz, you know, kind of like that Kramer on, on uh, one of the news channels, you know, where he says, oh, go out and buy this stock, this, you know, and, oh, don't buy that stock, you know, so, he plays a character like that, and one day, a guy basically breaks into the studio to take his, takes take his angst out on George Clooney's character with a, with a pipe, you know, a pipe bomb vest, and he's got a gun, and it's a really, really good movie, so that comes in at number 10. Coming in at number nine, the sh the shallows. Blake Lively, uh, shark, bikini. I really love this movie. I can't believe it's this low on the list because honestly, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that's on this list that just I'm sitting here while I'm making this list up. I'm going, ah, that'll go here, that'll go here, that'll go here, you know, and I'm just trying to figure it out in my head. I mean, it's not that it's not going to be the number one movie of 2016, but it's it's in the top ten. It's number nine. Coming in at number eight is Nice Guys. Oh my God, I didn't even see this in the theater. Um, it came out. It came and went again. I'm not a big fan of of uh, of uh, God. What's his name? Not him, but the other one, um, Ryan Gosling. I just think he's kind of a very bland actor. I don't think he really puts any effort into to doing his job. He just kind of like mutters mutters along, and just like I said, I'm just not a fan of his. But nice guys did a great job in this movie. I can't say enough. I think he I think he did a very very good job in this movie. Probably one of his best acting roles ever. You know, um, it's just it's a very well done movie. It takes place in the, in the 1970s. Russell Crowe plays a, an enforcer type, you know, and Ryan Gosling plays a PI, and they're trying to figure out this really crazy twisted mystery. Um, and Ryan Gosling's got a daughter in tow. Uh, it's, it's just funny. I mean, the movie was just really good. It's kind of long, but it's a really, really good movie. Can't say enough about it. Okay, coming in at number seven. Ten Cloverfield Lane. John Goodman deserves an Oscar for this movie. I love his character in this movie. I don't always love everything that he does, but I do like him as an actor. Um, and Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. Uh, pfft. I'm so in love with her. I just, I can't, I, I think she does, it doesn't matter what she does, whenever she does, like, horror or thriller movies, she just goes above and beyond to doing a great job. So, you got that. Is it a sequel to Cloverfield? Yes and no. There is a connection. It's not the biggest one, but the movie itself is really, really good. Coming in at number six, Star Trek Beyond. This is my favorite of the Star Trek reboot movies. I mean, I did like the first one. 
The second one, which was basically Wrath of Khan all over again. Eh, you know. Uh, but this one, this one just had everything. It had science fiction, it had aliens. I mean, we got, we got to meet a new kind of alien. Uh, we got to look at old tech. It was just an all-in-all-out all out fun movie. I, I loved everything about it. I... I hope they continue making the Star the Star Trek uh, series. You know, I hope they keep going and doing this because this one really hit a point. I liked it a lot. It's definitely uh, it's definitely number six. Coming in at number five, The Magnificent Seven. Now, you guys know if you've watched my stuff for my my channel for a long time, you know that what my favorite actor of all time is Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen was in the 1960 original film, The Magnificent Seven, which was based off of Kurosawa's Seven Samurai from the 50s. Now, with that, we had Steve McQueen, we had uh, Charles, Charles Bronson, um, Robert Vaughn, and many, many other, well, not many, many, I mean, Eli Wallach played the bad guy. Uh, but we had many others in this, and it was a great movie. I never think I, when I heard that they were doing a remake, I was both perturbed and and surprised. <laughs> and then I saw the the actors list, and it's like Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt, and you know, and all this. And I'm like, okay, I've never seen Denzel Washington make a bad movie. I'm not saying he hasn't. He had, there hasn't been a. I didn't care for Flight. Let's put it that way. Out of all the movies he's made, I just didn't like Flight. But that was the subject matter. I just didn't connect with it. So, Magnificent Seven. They make it. It comes out. And it's a great movie. Oh, my God. I still love the 1960 original Steve McQueen film. But, yeah. This uh, this movie in itself is going to go into my collection when I finally when I finally get around to getting it. I know it just came out not too long ago, but I have enough stuff to watch right now. You guys saw my you guys saw my Black Friday haul. I'm still going through that. Yeah. Coming in at number 4. Doctor Strange. Stephen Strange of the Marvel Universe that uh growing up reading comics Doctor Strange was definitely like one of those comics that I always, even though I was more of a DC person and my brother was a Marvel person, we we would switch comics back and forth. I mean, he I'd read his Captain Americas and Doctor Stranges, and he'd read, you know, my X Men and you know whatever I had. You know, it's like Batman, or Green Arrow, or Brave and the Bold at the time. I think it was what, what it was at the time, you know, and. So we would switch back, and I always loved Doctor Strange, you know, it was all that occult and magic and stuff like that. And uh, when I heard that they were doing a Marvel a Marvel Universe movie of it, I was like, yes, Doctor Strange is such a cool character. Then I heard it was Benedict Cumberbatch, and I'm like, the, the, the guy that played Khan in the second Star Trek movie? I wasn't really on board with that. I was like, I, I honestly, when people go, when I said this, people go, well, who would you put? I'm like, I don't know. I, I couldn't think of anybody that really fit the role of Stephen Strange. You know, and then I saw the movie, and I'm like, okay, Benedict Cumberbatch can be Stephen Strange. He did a really, really good job. Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One was just kind of weird, but hey, I'm on board with that. The movie itself was... Uh, was just a special effects feast. I mean, everything. You had, you had the bending cities like in Inception, and you had this crazy magic uh, net-like, you know, just all these glyphs that would pop out of nowhere and stuff like that. It was very cool. I loved Doctor Strange. I need to pick up Doctor Strange and watch it again. I'm a big fan of the Marvel Universe uh, movies. Coming in at number three, we have the Green Inferno, or not the Green Inferno, <laughs> it's the Green Room with Patrick Stewart, Anton Yelchin, who, who is also in uh, Star Trek Beyond, you know, as Pavel Chekhov. This was a very cool movie because it was very uh, subdued and kind of underground, had kind of an underground feeling to it. it. wasn't really, I mean, it was out there, but not a whole lot of people were talking about it. And when I went and saw it when it came out, 
I was blown away. Patrick Stewart is a bad guy. You know, he plays like this crazy neo-Nazi leader type of thing, and and it's all got it's all based in the world of punk music, um, and it's in the Pacific Northwest. It it just everything about it was like very very cool, and they even filmed it actually in Oregon. You know, uh, it was just a fun movie. It was crazy. I don't want to give anything away about it, but if you must, if you're looking for something to watch. Watch The Green Room. This is such a cool, cool movie. It's number two. Well, if that's number three, what's number two? Number two is Rogue One. That's right. I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm a Marvel Universe fan. I'm a horror fan. I'm a classic movies fan. And like I said, we're going to go with uh, we're gonna go with Rogue One for number two. Now, you're all probably sitting there going, just a second. What the hell... Can, if that's number two, what's number one? Well, we're going to get to that in a second. I liked Rogue One. Don't get me wrong. Rogue One is a very well put together movie. Um, the story is there. We got to see the late Carrie Fisher. I say that now because she just died two days ago. We got to see the late Carrie Fisher in one of her last roles. From what I understand, she she finished recording or recording filming her role for the Star Wars 8. So we will see her in Star Wars 8. It's not going to be her... This is not her last role. And, and uh, oh, this is... Um, what am I talking I'm talking about Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, she's in Rogue One, but uh, that's a whole different thing. But, you know, I liked it. I liked the story. It was kind of cool, but I really wanted Rogue One to be in the middle years. So, at at the end of... Revenge of the Sith starts right here, and then we got A New Hope, and it's right here. And between that two, between that those two points is a twenty-year gap because the babies are born. Leah and Luke. Leah goes to live with a uh, Bail Organa. Luke goes and lives with his uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. You know, um, so there's a twenty-year gap in there. It's not until a new hope that we catch up with the t with the two of them and find out that you know hey look they're teenagers now but i wanted that middle year i wanted about a 10 year between them and i didn't get that i want to see more of the rise of the power of, of vader i mean yes vader has been, because he just becomes vader at the end of uh at at the end of uh, revenge of the sith you know he puts the helmet on and it's like <sighs> You know, all that. So, I want to see a little bit more of the rise of the power of Vader. I didn't get that. Rogue One takes place just like days before A New Hope. Um, which is cool. I mean, but I still wanted more. That's why it's only at number two. And number one, of course, is Captain America Civil War. Another Marvel movie, man. We got Doctor Strange. We got Captain America. So, yeah, Captain America Civil War basically could have just been called the Avengers. I mean, everybody is in this with the exception of, uh, I think, Thor and Hulk don't make it into this one. Other than that, you got Spider-Man, you got Hawkeye, you got Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Ant-Man, uh, Iron Man, you know, I mean, it's just the uh, Black Panther. Woohoo! Yeah. Black Panther, and that's one of the reasons that I really loved Civil War. We get to see Black Panther for the first time on the big screen, and there were scenes taken right out of the comics. There's a there's a scene where Ant Man is on top of a an arrow. He shrunk down to ant size, and he's on he's on one of Hawkeye's arrows, and it's being shot. And that's taken directly from a panel in a comic book. That was. That's just, oh my god, that's right there. I, was, I I remember seeing that and reading that. and I mean, that's why I liked Captain America Civil War just a little bit more than Rogue One. So, there you go. That's my top ten best movies of 2016. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, share. Do it all. I want to hear what you have to say. If you don't like this list, tell me about it, man. Don't be mean about it, but just tell me about it. Tell me what you think. 
Did I leave something off this list? I mean, this is the stuff that I, I watched and I really liked. And this was a hard list to make up. So, if I left something off, tell me what I left off. I, I'm a good sport. I want to hear what you have to say. With that, I'm the 13th Wolfman. Of course, I'm on the prowl.